All right, we were briefly mentioning some of the top players surrounding, uh, around Hard Knocks and the Chicago Bears being a part of Hard Knocks. But going into this August, what is your number one Hard Knocks storyline outside of Caleb Williams becoming a Chicago Bear? I like uh, Again, maybe we won't see a lot, but I want to see Matt Eberflus in front of the room. Like, instead of, like, just in front of a win, in the locker room with a win, I want to see him in front of the room compared to how other coaches have been with their group. Is it as boring as it is at the podium, or does he does he have a little something to him? A little juice to him. Yeah. Yes. Um, I want to, like, the secondary, didn't they give themselves a nickname already? Um, what is their nickname? I got to look it up. They, they supposedly nicknamed themselves. I think the secondary is the strongest yeah. part of this team. Me too. I think that'd be super cool to watch. And the linebackers. I think uh, we had you and me and Waddle talk to uh, TJ, not TJ, or Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine, uh, yeah. At the draft coverage. I would like to see him, TJ Edwards, and, oh, Jack Sanborn. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the wide receiver room is is great too. Like all the different levels, you've got one guy who's a rookie, you've got one guy who is entering the prime of his career, and you've got one guy who's changing teams, and is towards the end of his career. How are they going to all interact? What's the competition going to be like? How are they interacting with Caleb Williams, the new offensive coordinator? I think you know installing this offense, it's going to be fantastic. And I think Cole Komet's going to be a darling. You think so? I do. He's really, really outgoing, super outgoing. So I think he'll, he'll, the people will gravitate to him. We have not mentioned this news today. Jalen Waddell, wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins, signed a three year, nearly $85 million extension. So that'll pay him around $28 million per year uh, over the course of that extension. Given how we've seen wide receiver contracts go, this offseason in particular, whether it's A.J. Brown, we saw Nico Collins in the contract he got, Devontae Smith, there's plenty of more that are going to come out as well. Is Roma Dunze the most important wide receiver on the Chicago Bears? No, D.J. Morris. I, I'm not going to, like, it, it, this may be a cop-out, but I don't think there is a most important bear, yeah, bear all, wide receiver. But D.J. Moore is a top 12 receiver in the NFL. He's got to have a big year. I think they all have to have a big year because you can't be so one-dimensional. You have got to be multi-dimensional, and, and, and not being able to key in on one guy is going to be so vital. You know, like last year, it was just Justin staring down DJ Moore. Yep. And and then all of a sudden, DJ has such a good year, and Darnell Mooney is AWOL. Like, you have got to be able, okay, on this play, it could be Keenan Allen. On this play, it's going to be DJ Moore. On this play, oh, you, you, you've you covered the two veterans. Now it's going to be Roma Dunze. Or your tight end. Or it's going to be the, Everett Command. Right. And then don't forget about uh, uh, you know Swift. Uh, Swift coming out of the backfield and he can he can really catch the ball, so like like I don't want there to be a most important wide receiver. I want there one day to be a guy who goes for one twenty, the next day the next guy goes for one twenty, right. and at the end of the year they all have a thousand yards. That'd or be amazing. Two of the guys have a thousand yards, and by the end of the year, Roma Dunze is very good, and he's ready to take the torch. If we have three guys with a thousand yards, Caleb's getting a four thousand. Oh, for sure. I think if he gets two guys with a thousand yards, he probably gets to four. He has a chance because if he goes, two guys go for a thousand, and if Cole gets seven. Uh, and then you get you third get receiver gets seven or eight, right? And then you get the 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 running backs with some screens. You're at four, I think so. Let's go. But there's still a lot of growing to do. There's a lot, like and I wrote about said. it today. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see tomorrow if he's better this OTA than he was or this week's of OTA than last week's OTA. Bears put out a video today of him hitting Roma Dunze in believe. slow motion. Yeah. Yes, that one play. It's better than any play I saw last week, so that is a step. Meller poo pooed it. No, I just listen. I'm I, I'm all for the big completions. I just can't get overly excited by a video that the Bears social media team puts out. 
I need to see a little more evidence before I start going, okay. But, but listen, like you said, completions are better than incompletions. And again, we didn't see a play like that all last. And that came against, that was against Stevenson, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And he looks great. Tyreek Stevenson put, looked great he last He put some muscle on. Yes, he did. Uh, real quick, there was the viral clip going around from Jorge Lopez. We don't have time really to play the sound here, but um, if you missed it, he threw his glove into the stands yesterday after being ejected. The Mets have gone on to DFA him, and the Cubs are in dire need of bullpen help after the game. The clip, uh, initially it sounded like he was calling the Mets the worst bleeping team in baseball. In reality, the clip, you can hear it once you listen to it again. He called himself, he said he looks like the worst teammate in all, uh, all of bleeping MLB. Um, but I asked you, if you look at Jorge Lopez's numbers, before these last two outings where he's kind of blown up a little bit, he has a 2.52 ERA over the course of 25 innings pitch. Jorge Lopez on the market now. If you're the Cubs, are you making a move on him? Yes. No hesitation. Yeah. Now, what do I have to give up? Do I have you to give anything up? I mean, it's a DFA, so you have to give up, like, the scratch-off of all scratch-off tickets from your farm system. So okay. essentially nothing. Okay, let's go. I'll give you a Madrigal. Okay. Like, Done. then you I would think it's less, be happy. I would think it's less than that. Yes. Get him nothing off on, the roster. But there's nothing on the Major League roster that the like, Cubs would have to like trade. They gave up a, a minor league version of Madrigal to get Miller Correct. in Seattle. Slaughter. Right. right? Like a 27-year-old yeah. mm -hmm. utility guy who had no future with the Cubs. Correct. So that's the same. And he was DFA'd. Correct. So, so go try. Yeah. Just keep bringing arms here. Jorge Lopez has made an all-star team in his past, and he did lead the Twins, Orioles, one of the teams in saves um, one year. So he very well could be. I mean, he doesn't have to be the, your closer, but he could certainly be a guy that I think would be an improvement as a seventh or eighth inning guy. Uh, uh, yeah. And, like, they, they don't have guys in the sixth or the seventh even that I feel confident in. Kyle the, Hendrickson doing for the Oh, no, I feel so bad. And then that, like, Such a good guy. The guy that you don't like, Leiter, is one of the guys I feel most confident in. He's just okay. I know, but who's not? Who, who, give me your power rankings on who you feel most confident with coming out of the pen for the Cubs. Okay? I'm waiting. I don't have anybody. That's what I'm saying. But that falls on the feet of Jed. Yes. Like, I heard Jesse said on the air to us. Now, again, this Jesse told us this. That council went to Jen and said, you got to sign Hector Neris. Right. So they did. Can you imagine if you didn't have if you him? Didn't, yeah, I know. Oh, my God. There is, too. There's some extenuating circumstances with uh, Pablo Lopez. His son is actually right now. Uh, Who's Pablo an... Lopez? Jorge. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jorge Lopez. Oh. Pablo Lopez is the twin starting pitcher. Jorge Lopez. Yeah, and his, his, uh, his son is actually on a transplant list as he's awaiting an organ donor so there's a lot of things going on with jorge lopez right now that may have contributed to why he kind of lost you know his head in the moment as he was walking off the field yesterday he didn't, like and, and like i agree like you never know what's going on in a man's life yeah but i don't even think compared to a lot of people that he really quote lost it, it wasn't that egregious and, and it, you wonder if just the whole the whole uh, event was kind of odd, and I just think because the Mets are in such a bad place, they felt the need to, like, send a message. But I think he could very well be a good player for whatever team ends up actually making a move for him.